Hello grade 10s and welcome back to another lesson with me Miss Martins. In today's lesson we will be going over some conservation of mechanical energy and we'll be looking at the following questions. Please pause the screen, do the questions and then mark with me as I go along in the video. Please remember to subscribe as well if you haven't yet. So our question says Vusi of mass 45 kilograms wants to reach an apple 2.5 meters above the ground. So here's the apples in the tree and they tell me that the height above ground is 2.5. He connects a swing to a high branch in an adjacent tree. Here's the tree over here. The bottom of the swing is 1.15 meters above the ground. So we've got two heights being given over here. He asks his friend Dave to push him in an effort to reach the apple. Apple, ignore friction. We have to ignore friction in these questions. We assume that we are dealing with an isolated system. My first question is a definition. And as you know, definitions are very important. You need to get them correct word for word. Define the term gravitational potential energy. Now, you should know that the formula for gravitational potential energy is EP is equal to MG. H. Potential energy depends on height above some reference point. That's why the definition is the energy of an object, gravitational potential energy. So it's energy of an object due to its position in the gravitational field relative to some reference point. Okay, so our reference point in this question is the ground. It's our zero position that has a height of zero. 5.2 is a little bit of a follow-on question because they want me to calculate the gravitational potential energy of Vusi on the swing before David pushes him. So remember, the swing is 1.15 meters above the ground. So if we're working up potential energy, as I mentioned, the formula is EP equals M times G times H, or you can use the symbol U. Now remember, your M is your mass in kilograms. So my mass in kilograms, okay, first we write our formula our blank formula first, always, always blank formula first, then the mass must be in kilograms. It has to be 45 kilograms. G is gravitational acceleration. And on earth, G will always be 9.8. And then H is the height above the reference point or the reference position, which is the ground. So the swing is 1.15 meters above the ground. So you substitute in and then you calculate your answer round off to two decimal places. And remember your unit energy is measured in joule. State the law of conservation of mechanical energy. This is a super important definition. They can ask this all the way up to metric. And the def definition is the total mechanical energy in an isolated system remains constant or stays the same. So you have to say total, you have to mention mechanical energy, you must say isolated system. Please do not say closed system. Isolated is for physics and remains constant or stays the same. That is perfect. Then they say use energy principles to calculate the minimum speed. We're looking for speed. We're looking for essentially velocity, V, with which David needs to push Vusi so that he can reach the apple in the tree. Four marks. Now, immediately, you see that it's four marks. That is quite a lot of marks, so we know we're going to be using the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. They also tell me to use energy principles, which in grade 10, the energy principles that you know are, is only the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, okay? We've got two situations here. We've got um, the mechanical energy at the swing and mechanical energy at the apple. So basically we have two positions on my diagram. You can even call it A and B. You can call it before and after. I'm calling it mechanical energy at the swing. So that would be this position over here equals mechanical energy at the apple. Now, why am I saying that they're equal? Because it says in an isolated system, the total mechanical energy remains constant. And as I mentioned earlier, the mechanical energy over here will be equal to the mechanical energy over here. Okay, the mechanical energy is the same at all points in the system. Then what is mechanical energy? Remember, it's EP plus EK. That is mechanical energy at the swing. Then at the apple, EP plus EK. We can break that down further. EP is equal to MGH. EK is equal to half MV squared. Same thing here. MGH plus half MV squared. Just remember that because this is at the swing, 
the height that we will substitute into this edge will be this height, the height at the swing, okay? For this one over here, because this is mechanical energy at the apple, the height that we substitute in here will be the height at the apple. I hope that makes sense. Now, when we sub in, you need to be very, very careful at this point over here. So let's do it from the left to the right. So mechanical energy at swing, this term over here, we've already calculated that answer. It is 507,15. Remember, we calculated it over here. However, if you wanted to, you could have just substituted like we did earlier again. So 45 times 9.8. And the height over here is this height over here. So 1,15. Then, remember, we need to know the minimum speed with which David needs to push Vusi. He's going to push Vusi over here with some unknown speed. So V, we don't know. We need to figure out what that speed is so that he can reach the apple 2.5 meters above the ground over here. So half, mass is 45 again. I'm looking for the speed at which he needs to push his friend. Then, at the apple, remember, this is the height at the swing, at the bottom. This is the height at the apple. So we've got, he's 45 kilograms. G on earth is always 9.8 meters per second squared. H at the apple. He wants to reach this maximum height of 2.5 meters. Okay? Now, this is where the part comes in where some people get confused. He, when he reaches this apple, okay, half mass, half 45, when he reaches his apple, we assume that this is at its maximum swing. So the maximum height of the swing. And he's going to reach the apple. Imagine it. Just picture it in your head. You're sitting on a swing. You swing up, 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 up. You reach the apple. You technically stop up there for a second. Okay. At the maximum height here, at the uh, max point of your swing, your velocity is zero. Think of a pendulum. When you are at the bottom of the swing, the velocity is at its max. And your height is zero, which means your potential energy is zero. I know that in our case, we're not at the bottom of the swing because we're not at the zero position. But anyway, and then at the top of the swing, we have to assume that the velocity is zero and the H is at its max. It's kind of like a pendulum situation. So my velocity at the apple must be zero. Then we solve. The rest is mathematics. You have to do your order of operations correctly. So again, multiply these three together, you get that value over there, which we calculated earlier. Half of 45 is 22.5 V squared. If I multiply these three together, you get quite a big number. It is 1102,5. And then anything multiplied by zero is going to end up being zero. Then what I do is I want to isolate V. Remember, I'm looking for speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take over this term. We are adding 507,15. So when I take it over to this side, I'm going to minus 507,15. Left over on this side is 22,5 V squared. My next step, I'm still trying to isolate V. I divide both sides by 22.5. You get 26,46. And then I need to do the opposite of square, which is square roots, 26.46. Your final answer, 5,14 meters per second. And remember the question asked for speed. Speed is not a vector. So it's a scalar. So we can leave our answer just like that. Now, I know I did a lot of in-between math steps here just to show you how to get to the answer. They're not necessary. All of this is not necessary to show on your page. You just need to give me the final answer. So where would you get your marks? You would get your marks for your formula. You would get it for substitution on the left-hand side to so all of this, substitution on the right-hand side, and then, of course, your final answer. Here's the memo so you can see where they allocate marks. Now, why is it not possible to use equations of motion, which we've also covered on my channel, to calculate the speed mentioned in 5.4? Now, I hope you know that this motion over here, do you see how it's curved like that? It's not a linear motion. So it's not horizontal along the x-axis straight like that, and it's not vertical along the y-axis like that. It's curved. So it's not linear. You can only use equations of motion for linear motion. So those are the acceptable answers on the memo. The most acceptable would be the first one. 
Now, my last question is a thinking question. You have to think about the relationships. You have to think about the formulas that we use in order to answer. They say Vusi now decides to adjust the seat of the swing so that it's brought closer to the ground. So instead of it being 1.15 meters, he's making this number smaller, okay, closer to the ground. Will the speed with which David needs to push Fusi to reach the apple be greater than, less than, or the same. Explain your answer without using any calculation. But look, grade 10, it's five marks. That's quite intense. So they don't want you to do a calculation like we did over here because you could easily adjust this number to be something smaller and then calculate speed again and see what happens. But that's not what they want you to do. They want you to think about it. So how you start with a question like this is you start at the beginning. What are we doing when we're adjusting the seat of the swing downwards? We are decreasing the height. Okay, we are decreasing this initial height. So I'm going to write it in bullet point form like this. We are decreasing the height. And what does decreasing the height do? Decreasing the height decreases the potential energy at the swing. Now, when we mentioned that decreasing the height also decreases the potential energy, it's always good to back that up with the formula. You can see that if this goes down, if H goes down, EP will go down. Now, remember, if potential energy goes down, what that means is that kinetic energy must go up. And why? Why must kinetic energy go up? Because remember, E mechanical is equal to EP plus EK. I showed you that earlier. And remember we said that mechanical energy will remain constant. It will stay the same at every single point throughout the system. Okay, so if potential energy goes up, think about it mathematically. If this number gets bigger, this number here has to get smaller in order for mechanical energy to stay the same. If that doesn't make sense to you, choose random numbers. So let's pretend EP is 20 and let's pretend EK is 10. What does that give me when I add it together? What's 20 plus 10? 30. Now pretend that, remember we said here that decrease heights, EP decreases. So let's pretend EP decreases to 15. I don't know, I'm just making up a number. See, it was 20, now it's 15. In order to make this equal 30, remember, mechanical energy is constant, it has to stay the same. If I want to keep mechanical energy constant and I decreased EP, what must happen to EK? 15 plus 15 will give me 30. So you can see that EP went down, that number got smaller, EK went up, it got bigger. So EK must increase because E mechanical is constant. Very, very important to mention what stays constant. And then you can write this formula because this formula backs up the statement that you just made. Okay, so that is that. And then think about it. If EK increases, then that means that speed would have to increase. Why? Because EK is equal to half mv squared. So to make this bigger, speed must get bigger. And it's always good to say over here somewhere that mass stays constant because the mass of the person on the swing isn't changing. Okay, so what is our answer? Our answer is greater than. So at the beginning of the answer, you say greater than, remember to actually answer the question. So the reason I didn't in the beginning is because I first worked it out, I wrote my explanation, and then I came back and wrote my conclusion there at the top. So where would you get your marks over here? This is the memo's answer, but what I would say is missing that I would like you to include, it is good practice to do this all the way up to matric, is whenever you mention EP would decrease, give me a formula to explain why. Okay, if the height decreases, EP decreases. And then since mechanical energy remains constant, EK would increase. Tell me why. Give me the formula. E mechanical equals EP plus EK. It's very, very important to mention the relationship, the formula, and then what stays constant. I hope that this question was useful and helpful, and I can't wait to see you guys in another video. Look at the links in the description box below for more questions like this one. Bye, everyone.